This week's Pilch Point with Avram Pilch is proudly powered by Pure VPN. Uh, when you're when you're browsing online, no matter where you are and what service you're using, uh, a VPN is a great way to help you kind of obfuscate your your uh, browsing trends. Whether you're trying to keep Facebook and Google out of your business or your ISP, a VPN uh, can help with all of that and we have got a deal for you on Pure VPN right now. Uh, you can actually get uh, two years of service uh, for two dollars and eighty-eight cents a month, which works out to sixty-nine dollars for two full years of service, which I think is a pretty great deal. And you can get this uh, this offer by going to PilchPoint.Live/PureVPN. So, Avram, you have been working on a project for a little while, and uh, I think we're going to get a pro so, some progress shots, right? Yes. So let's let's talk a minute. I um, one of the cool things you can do with my favorite new toy, the Raspberry Pi Four, is uh, and and actually do I think a little more easily with older Raspberry Pis because there's more support out there. Is make an emulator machine, make an arcade machine. Um, so. I've been working on testing something from uh, the company Pimeroni, which uh, makes a lot of really, really cool Raspberry Pi accessories. Um, I think I might have shown previously the, uh, the, uh, their case, which is pretty cool, the, uh, the Pibo case. It's like a rainbow color. Mm -hmm. um, and they also sent me, and I've been working on it, uh, it uh, this. I'll show you the poster. To show you what it will look like. I love that it's a this poster. It's called. They, it came with a poster, so. Can you see? That's the, cool. The Picade. I love Pi that. Cade. So, it even looks like it comes straight out of Stranger Things. Yes, it does. That's um, exactly what I was thinking. Like, they... they this, it, it looks like I mean the, the the lights the colors look like it come come straight out of Stranger Things, or from or from that wonderful uh, Kung Fury movie. Um, anyway, so uh, so unfortunately, my son and I have been working on it, and the instructions were a little difficult for us at first because we kept looking at videos for different versions of the Pi Cade. This is the brand new one that supports the Raspberry Pi Four, so and has a ten inch screen. So here I have like the shell of it, um, and we're working on the part with the screen, uh, and it should, you know, it should take two to three hours. Um, I'm just uh, confused myself by reading some of the older versions of the instructions and watching older versions of the video because I have the newest brand spanking new revision of it, which is a 10 inch, not an eight inch screen. Uh, so this thing goes for around $200. Well, Pimeroni sells it for 195 pounds, uh, but you you can get it. You can order from their site in dollars, or uh, Adafruit imports them. Although I'm not sure if Adafruit has this latest 10 inch uh, 10 inch model just yet. Um, they may. So uh, so what's cool about it is it comes with the 10 inch screen. It comes with all the arcade buttons. It comes with the joystick. Uh, what it doesn't come with is the Raspberry Pi. So now this model here is was made very specifically to work with the Pi 4, uh, which means it has a slightly different connector because the Pi 4 uses um, micro HDMI ports uh, for video out and it uses uh, type C for charging. So it has a slightly different uh, connector inside, although otherwise you can get this for, I think the Pi 3, um, I'm not sure you may even be able to use this for the Pi, this one with the Pi 3. I think I think probably not. But one of the catches is that right now the Pi 4 is in an, is in a strange situation emulation wise. To understand where you're at, where we're at, you need to understand how people do emulation on a Raspberry Pi, which is a very popular platform for emulation. People do a ton of creating old game systems. And as I showed previously, and I just happen to have sitting over here also, this is a system that, that my son and I made 
uh, a few months ago that uses a Raspberry Pi 3B and runs a popular arcade emulator called um, called RetroPie. And RetroPie has uh, a nice menu and it will do emulation of a lot of different systems, uh, regular plain old arcade games, Ataris, Intellivision, ColecoVision, Nintendo 64, Commodore 64. Uh, it, it will emulate all that old, all that old stuff. Um, the problem is, uh, they still haven't updated, uh, even a month after it's come out, uh, RetroPie still has, which is the most common emulator, uh, environment still hasn't been updated for the Pi 4, still doesn't work on it. So if you were wanting to do something today, what would you do? Well, you could use an older Raspberry Pi if you had one. Uh, or you could download one of a couple of alternatives. So one that my son and I were using is called Laka, L-A-K-K-A. -A. Um, and they have nightly beta versions of it that come out. And so some of the beta versions now support the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, although my son and I were trying to work with one today and having trouble getting it to work. So it's definitely the software right now is more of a challenge than the hardware. Um, but give it you know, another couple of weeks, and I'm sure that RetroPie will be ported uh, over to um, to it, and you know, whatever other systems, Laka, for example, is a good one, uh, will probably start working better with, with Pi 4. Um, but meanwhile, you can use something like this to put together the hardware, or you can build your own box with, with buttons, or let's say you really don't care about having it look authentic and you just want to play the games, all you need to do then is take your Raspberry Pi, be it a 4, be it a 3, whatever software you're running on it, uh, plug it, install the software on it, plug in a controller of your choice, and attach it to a TV, and it will play you, these games. You do not need uh, old-school arcade buttons and old-school fight sticks uh, and a dedicated screen to do it. Those are just really cool things to have but as far as actually being able to play the games you could play a lot of them on a on a pi zero w that costs five dollars so you know provided you attach a controller so uh you know that's that's the gist of it now the question you may be asking is where are you going to get the games that is a complicated question because they exist in kind of a legal gray area. So some folks actually own old cartridges and they've devised ways to rip them and turn them into ROMs uh, that you can use. There are sites that host ROMs you can download. Um, I'll leave that to the audience to find for themselves. But um, for, you know, which is which is, of are, course, for the best, because Nintendo has been very active about uh, seeking them out and sending yeah. cease and yeah. desist. So we won't yeah. uh, we won't give Nintendo a bulleted yeah. list of targets. <laughs> there are, of course, there, but it's not only Nintendo stuff. I mean, obviously, there's just arcade games that you can play that have nothing to do with Nintendo. There's Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. Um, so it, it really depends on on what you're looking for. Now there are. A couple of like I think open source, uh, free freeware arcade games that you can get, but like none of them, unfortunately, none of them are the games that people probably really want. Yeah, it's not Dig Dug, it's not Pac Man, you know. So yeah, for sure. Um, uh, just just for our audience's reference, as of as of airing, uh, Add a Fruit only has the three, not the four model. So you won't find the version that you have from Adafruit. So you will have to search a little harder. Yeah, I mean, Pimeroni.com has all these things, although they would ship it to you from the UK. And it looks like their 10-inch display model is out of stock as I'm looking at it. Um, but, uh, you know, probably probably back in stock soon. Um, I'll be, when I get this finished, I'll be putting up a full article about it. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it how it plays. It's definitely not the easiest thing to build, but maybe because the instructions uh, 
that I got could have been a little better. And then looking at the ones they have online, apparently for the wrong thing. Uh, but uh, once I get it figured out, uh, which I think I shortly will, it, it could be uh, really cool. I think what I'll really judge it on is how how is the gameplay? Like, how's the screen? How's, how's the joystick feel? How are the buttons? Um, and from my experience, not all buttons are created equal. Like when I was building this thing, I tried like a score of different kinds of buttons mm -hmm. and like these green ones here feel fantastic, right? They will really click. These these lighted ones here, because I ran out of green ones and I wanted ones that were different colors, kind of stiff. So, you know, not all, not all buttons are created equal for sure. Plus they are using the type of buttons that you have to push through, not screw in. Um, so I'll have to make sure those are good because so like here I have, this is just a board to the wise here. So here I have a button that, that you have to push through when you're, when you're building your retro arcade. Now for something like the pie kid, it should be fine because the holes that they drilled the holes for you for the buttons. So they ought to be a perfect size. When I drilled my own holes, I found that these push through ones were never quite tight enough. And if I hit the button too hard, they just fall through into the box. Far so, less forgiving. So I really don't like this kind. If I were building, like, by the way, there's a lot of sets on Amazon or whatever that you can get of buttons, whatever. If for those who are thinking about doing it, look at the buttons. Do not get the buttons that have this type of pressure sensitive squeezy thing. Get the ones that have a nut on it that you screw uh, to hold them in place because those are those work really well whereas these if your hole is, is less than perfect or you hit it too hard you might push the button through uh, so this is the cheap cheap kind um, yeah they're, anyway they're, so that's they're definitely less forgiving the 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 screw in place ones you know worst case scenario you make your your hole way too big you could always add washers or something to to, to you know, right. fix the whole size, which is not something with those pressure ones. It, it is perfect or it is nothing. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, long story short, uh, we'll be having more about this, uh, pie cade, uh, shortly on Tom's hardware.com. And, uh, there's uh, a lot of cool retro gaming things you can do with your raspberry Pi. And while the software situation, the emulator situation with Pi four is a little in flux right now. Um, I'm sure it's going to be in a really good place soon. Uh, and the hope is that it will actually run emulators that weren't possible uh, to run or didn't run well on the Pi 3. Um, you know, for example, somewhere there's a PlayStation 2 emulator. Uh, we sh you know, I'd like to see if I could get that running on it because that's something that you really can't, can't do. If, I think that really requires quite a bit of processing power. Yeah, that would make sense. And with the new model having, you know, the option for way more RAM, <laughs> just just that alone, the ability to have way more RAM uh, would make, you know, emulators more slightly more powerful emulators uh, more possible. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if it's the RAM itself that's going to make the big difference. I think it might be more having to do with provide that the emulators are optimized to take advantage of this processor, but mm -hmm. it's now like, I think a Cortex A72 processor, which means that it can do a much higher number of instructions per clock um, than the prior ones. Uh, so, you know, it, it ought to be significantly faster and on many tests it is two to four times faster than a Pi 3, than a Pi 3 B plus. Which is significant. Yeah, the, Two to four times is is a significant change in in performance. But you know things still need to be optimized for the Pi Four and its graphics, uh, GPU and things like that. So we'll have to see uh, what shakes out. Very cool. So uh, obviously you're still in the in the build process on this, but uh, when you've got it together, we'll we'll see something about it on Tom's Hardware. Yes. Fantastic. Well, as always, Abram, I I love hearing about your uh, 
your project <laughs> progress. Because you you manage to get yourself into some really fun projects, and I always like to to see your your progress shot. So, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, always a pleasure. Wish I had it finished sooner. <laughs> I understand that. That's how projects go sometimes. 